Good morning, everyone. James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining me. And today we're going to be cooking up some small game. This right here is the pack rat. It is an animal native to the American Southwest. And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't have a lot of experience hunting or feeding on pack rats. Uh, they're nocturnal and they're very elusive. elusive. These last couple of weeks, I have been scouting for quail and rabbit in my area, and just I've not had much success in hunting them, but I accident, accidentally ended up catching a pack rat. Now, I, I assumed it was a pack rat, but uh, just to play it safe, I, I left it alone. I came home, I did my research, and just verified that you know there wasn't you know any problems with the state of Texas in hunting them, or you know they were edible. And sure enough, native tribes in the region did consume them, as well as survivalist Cody Lundin in his book, The Art of Keeping Your Ass Alive. He does talk about how he eats them, how he enjoys them. So that encouraged me. I came back a week later and caught myself a brand new one. So I hope you guys have worked up an appetite. I hope you guys are ready for some breakfast because we're going to be eating good this morning. Stick around. Now before we begin, let's go ahead and rewind a little bit so I can show you guys how I caught this animal for those who are kind of new to this channel. Uh, one of the things, one of the items I use very often to catch small game is Victor rat traps and they work very well. Um, I use peanut butter and bird seed and that draws a lot of small game from squirrels to birds and uh, just a very successful way of catching small game. Now. I use, like I said, peanut butter and bird seed, and then when I set the trap, I put debris around it, rocks and sticks, and that way the animal has no choice but to approach from the killing end, so it raises our probability of making sure that that's a successful snap, and that's how we caught this little guy. So, uh, let's put away my traps, and proceed. Okay, so first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to place the animal on the bed of coals just so we can start singeing off the fur. And just in case he has any parasites like fleas or ticks, I doubt it. This animal has been, was caught in the trap for a couple hours already, so I'm pretty sure all the parasites just left when they realized he was dead. But just to play it safe, just singe it off a little bit. Not too much, we're not trying to cook them. Our coals are pretty strong there, so as you can tell. Let it get a little hot. And I think that's good enough. That's, uh, once again, our fire is pretty strong, so. Okay, so now we're just gonna cut a slit on the fur. There's a, wow. Okay, there we go. And we're gonna start pulling it apart. Now this animal doesn't feel too difficult as say a uh, rock squirrel. Rock squirrel is a very, very difficult creature to skin just because it's so stringy and tough. But this one doesn't feel like that. This one feels very similar to rabbit. Taking off the pants. Taking off the shirt. For this, you can eat the head, you can eat the brains if necessary. I'm not gonna do that to be honest, so I'm just gonna cut around the neck. So I can just twist it off. And that'll just get rid of all this fur up here. There we go. 
next step is to remove the intestines and all the entrails. I like to make a, an incision up here by the ribs just so I don't uh, risk of you know some accident and I ended up tainting the meat. There we go. Okay, and this is also a, an excellent opportunity to be sure to verify that the animal is in fact a healthy specimen and it's not doesn't have anything that we should be worried about. So there we go. Okay, let's start getting all this out. All these intestines, all these guts. Liver looks pretty healthy. You don't see any spots on it. You know, it looks pretty decent. Okay, now to cut into the sternum and remove the lungs and the heart. These are the lungs. Internal looks pretty decent already. So just uh, cut at the bottom where the last of the intestines are so we don't get any fecal matter. Well, that's not the smoothest skidding job I've ever done, but it's, it's decent and it's a uh, almost ready to go. I'm just gonna give them a quick rinse. That's if you have water, I would suggest you go ahead and do that just to remove any fur and body fluids that it'll have. Just make the meat a little cleaner. If you don't have water available to you, you are in some kind of survival situation, anything like that, well, uh, you know, don't be too picky, but. Okay, now that he's been rinsed out, we're, we're gonna go ahead and put some spices on him for flavor. Now, of course, some people are gonna be quick to say that if you are in a survival situation, you wouldn't have spices. Well, lucky for us, we are not in a survival situation and we're just enjoying ourselves outside. So uh, I always bring spices on my backpack regardless because eating wild food, you quickly uh, learn to appreciate the added flavors of spices. So. Once again, if you don't have any spices, well then, you're just gonna have to rough it out, but we can afford a little bit of luxury this morning. So we got some salt, pepper, and maybe some cayenne. And there you go, he's ready for the spit. Okay, so we got ourselves a green stick here. So let's just remove these. This was, had already fallen earlier I'd cut it earlier and uh, <clears throat> yeah it's still still a little bit alive but the leaves are already starting to dry out so maybe this one can just... leave it as a fork so it can keep the animal propped open and that's it just it over the coals. And then place rocks over here so we can suspend it above the heat. And every once in a while we'll come back and just move them just to make sure everything's getting evenly cooked. But breakfast is almost ready. Okay, now it's almost finished cooking. One problem we ran into is just since the legs are just spread, it keeps kind of falling back. So it's, uh, I fear that it's gonna burn the little legs. So what I did is I just cut a little piece of green stick from the tree be behind me. 
And since the, the legs are naturally arching back, I'm just gonna use that to my advantage and place the green stick like this. And with the pressure, it'll keep it. And that way it kinda doesn't have the animal sliding down, but keeps it a little bit more even. Well guys, he's been cooking for about 15 to 20 minutes, so I'd say it's ready. Now, like I said earlier, I've never cooked a pack rat before, but I've cooked other rodents such as rabbits, squirrels, kangaroo rat. So I basically followed the same formula. Cook it until it's nice and charred. It's better, better to overcook it than to undercook it. And that goes with any wild game, guys. You just don't want to be taking any chances and risk any chance of disease or parasites. So uh, I like it well done. And then we're just gonna let it cool off and it's chow time. Let's see what's the verdict on pack rat. Let's see if old Cody's telling the truth or this guy's just uh, not very good. So we got ourselves a little drumstick here. Nice and flaky. Not bad. like rabbit it tastes basically identical to rabbit hmm oh yeah And those spices definitely help. Gives it this peppery taste. Not bad at all. Your turn. Should have brought some tortillas. Make some pack rat tacos. Well guys, that's about the conclusion of this video. It was really exciting to try out a new food source out here. And I always, that's my favorite part about doing all this outdoor stuff is I love hunting and gathering and just, uh, you know, wondering how it tastes and all that stuff. I love that whole process and I'm hoping to do a little bit more of those catch and cook type videos uh, towards, you know, the end of the year. So I'm hoping to still catch a rabbit, still catch a quail and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys learned something from this. Once again, this was my first pack rat. So it could have been a little bit smoother, but you know, it was a learning experience for all of us. If you still want to learn a little bit more on how to process a rat in general, I would suggest check out um, Sean Woods' channel. He has an excellent, excellent video on processing a rat. Uh, he even eats the balls of the rat, I, which I'm, I'm not that hungry. I'm not going to do that. But uh, check out that video. Very informative, very fun. Okay, guys, so... That's about it. I'm gonna eat the rest of my breakfast out here. Thank you so much for the love, the support, the likes, the comments, and I'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty.